Okay, welcome to the Ken Seven podcast, and I've got another football chat. And joining me is Liverpool's goalkeeping coach, John Acterborg. John, thanks very much for joining us. How are you doing? Oh, I'm good, Gav. How are you? I'm all right. Yeah, no, I'm all right. Thanks for your time. I appreciate it. I'm assuming you've been in training today. So, no, actually, uh, today uh, not because uh, we trained the last few days. And they took one day out. Uh, otherwise, they would uh, going six sessions to the game. So they took this day out today. Um, but yeah, we will be back in the morning and then um, working to the Arsenal game. Everyone should be back tomorrow. Uh, I was going to um, say all the international players back tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, they all back tomorrow, and then this full preparation for Arsenal. Do the tactics and get the team ready. No, that's how it works. I can't wait for the game. I really can't. I mean, it's just this gap killed me. Yeah, Absolutely killed me. It must be the same for you. And then you get, you know, the, the week where obviously we meant to play Arsenal goes out because of the FA Cup. So that's why three weeks no football. Hmm. Apart from training, we've been pretty busy with training. We really keep the, the players going who are not away. So all good. Yeah, yeah. cool. Um, okay, so you're one of the very... Am I right in saying you're one of the few goalkeeping coaches in the world that has actually got the FIFA Pro license? Is that right? Um, pro, yeah, it's right, but I don't know if any others have them. There will be a few out, I guess, but yeah, I, I always uh, wanted to do everything you can do, really. So I did the outfield, the goalkeeping ones. I did my academy managers one, and then I started also with the... Uh, different uh, you know they do like 70 to 21 coaching bats and stuff like that but now they made a lot new ones again but yeah i have uh, all the goalies and outfield ones the main ones really um but yeah my my focus is only on the goalies really and that is my 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 passion and my job really well that was that was my question so you've done your fifa pro license how does that benefit you from the goalkeeping side? Is it, is it down to uh, tactics or or training training techniques? No, the outfield one it does it makes you more wider range. If if you would be ever in in a situation uh, where you could do something like that, then you can think about it. I have no I have no ambition on it because I only want to be goalie coach and that's my passion. So, but. Uh, yeah, it, it gives you uh, experience from different things. There's a part in the in the outfield pro license dealing with media and all that stuff, and um, like yeah, different different. Uh, they they create different uh, environments where you have to uh, deal with, and then they're watching uh, some technical tactical sides of football and stuff like that. So all, all it's good to to make your knowledge better, and that's why you do it really. I mean, Just, yeah, I remember I remember seeing a, a quote from Jurgen Klopp once saying, mm-hmm. "John's the only person I know that yeah. whatever you're talking about, he'll bring it back to goalkeeping." <laughs> uh, that's Is that about, true? That's about right. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's true. Uh, yeah, sometimes they just walk away because they uh, they know what's coming. So, but uh, yeah, that's that's how it is. I I only uh, yeah think about twenty four seven about goalkeepers and looking at goalkeepers and training and and obviously you have to prepare them for the next game. So you're looking at what the opponent does in training of in in their games, and then we make training sessions for it to to try and, and prepare the goalkeeper so they know what they try to do. So you install the movements, uh, what they try to create in, in in the game. And so he knows what happens and how we can handle the situation best. And hopefully with the best outcome, that's that's what we try and do. Where What's your day-to-day like I mean give us a like a typical day you've got a game at the weekend what how would that how, how does that work um yeah I go in in the, in the morning and depends sometimes you train in the morning sometimes we train later on um you watch uh sometimes you watch other goalies you know if they like this this period is the under 21 so you watch every goalkeeper who is playing for their country in the 20 wants to see uh, who is there. Most of them I already seen with 17 because you like to follow all the tournaments just to know uh, 
what is out there and, and what could be interesting in the future if we need to do anything. Um, you know, you need to make your training session, uh, but normally we plan a few days ahead, you know, um, we plan normally uh, from game to game with what we need to do, uh, what uh, we, we try to achieve. And um, um, yeah, then then obviously get ready for the training. Find out uh, what the team uh, does in training. What, what, how long we have to got to work with the goalies? When they need the goalies? Uh, do we need to do a little bit after training to finish off or or not? We try to get the whole program in most of the times. But if we think it's enough, then we we finish it off really. Um, yeah, in general, that is most of the times the situation. Then, uh, you know, you obviously need to look at the opponent, what they do. We have a meeting with all the managers and uh, and and, uh, and the coaches to, to see what the opponent does. Uh, most of the times, you know, already because you have a look already beforehand and from experience, you know what teams want to do and then you already make the training on that um yeah and after the games you cut the clips out for the goalies and and uh, so they can look back what was good and not good and if we need to talk about it we'll talk about it um and then yeah we try to basically after after the end of the game the next day it's already most of the times focus on the next one and it's like uh, continuous routine really so um that's how, how roughly how it works you, I mean, you don't get a break at all, do you? With the with the way, especially this season, the way the big games have come thick and fast. Yeah. Something I wanted to ask you: I, I did see in an interview that you'd done um, that you, from an early age, especially with mm. your goalkeeping, but then with your coaching, yeah. you were always keen mm. on teaching goalkeepers about a high a high line and. Yeah. and he was playing as a sweeper yeah. and then Jurgen Klopp comes in and that's exactly mm. sort of how he wants to play and, and Brendan Rodgers to a certain extent yeah. do you yeah. do you think the goalkeeping position has, has changed or has that always been a thing um, in, in, in Liverpool's case not not too much really even when Kenny was the manager we had Reina who was also looking yeah. For the balls in behind, to be honest, and if you go further, Groblo was probably in Liverpool one of the first who did it. Uh, and and um, but I, I'm growing up in Holland, and in Holland uh, I had a uh, an ex striker who was the manager uh, from my local team, and um, the Dutch way is a little bit like that. And he, you know, he say you need to come out the box to clear and. And and so you grow up with, with that really. So I am very much been growing up like uh, um, yeah a goalkeeper who plays on the front foot, balls over the top, comes out, come for crosses, speed reactions, everything. So um, then obviously Aldrich signed me because I had this kind of things, and obviously Trame wanted to play high press as well, and yeah. the goalie coming out because Aldo also was probably used from Liverpool. So yeah, I, I grow up with it really, and and I I started coaching probably I think it was twenty four something like that twenty three. Um, I, I was already on the ladder doing in in my free time coaching every age goalkeeper and and that's what you try to create to create them in a technical good shape but also in positional uh, attacking movements really uh, attacking the ball if they in the goal diving forward uh, cutting the the corners uh, to make the goal small from every angle where the ball is yeah and try to let them know uh, where to positioning when the ball is on the field so you you try to make all-round goalkeepers really because I think if you create all-round goalkeepers and looking to make them then they can play in all the teams in the world I think the other way around is a lot difficult because if you have a goalkeeper who only have to stand in the on the goal line mm. and waiting for the shots because the team is only defending then going to an attacking team could cause issues by you know positioning uh, higher up the field and stuff like that and want to come 
full balls over the, over the top and in behind. So, um, yeah, so when you scout, you look at that kind of things too. And, you know, nowadays, obviously, they have to be able to play with both feet. That, that also adds on to it, really. And just, I mean, you would have seen the change in football when the, the back pass rule came in. Yeah. How did goalkeepers afterward? I mean, that must have been a massive change for goalkeepers. You just said that goalkeepers need to be able to kick with both feet. Yeah. For that reason, did, what did, you know, at that time when that rule came in, were you playing at that time? Or? I, I was already playing. Yeah. yeah. Uh, in my situation, uh, wasn't too difficult because, uh, yeah, it was. You know, if you if I go back to my younger years, I we I was in, a, in an amateur team who had like twenty six youth teams. So. From on the nines up to on the 18s, they had 24 teams. So, if I played in my own team uh, in goal when I was 10, I played in any other team uh, if I could play uh, because they were all played different times to, during the day. So, nice. on a Saturday, it was all the youth teams playing, and on a Sunday, the senior ones. So, I played always in any positioning if they were one or two short. So, <laughs> right, right. And if they had uh, only 11 players, I go with them in the hope that I can play uh, as the number 12 come yeah. on and play. So I played in every position anyway. So actually, funny thing was, I was um, signed as a goalkeeper for Utrecht, my, uh, you know, in the, in the Dutch Premier League. But they had a trialers day for players and they were short and I played centre-half and the, the scouts wanted to sign me as centre-half. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so I, I was always used to playing and and yeah, I was basically always busy 24-7 with football and still the same. So um, so I have I didn't have the problem. The goalkeeper in Utrecht, who was uh, not very good with the feet, had a lot of problems with it. Right. So, um, so yeah, and that was just uh, something what had to change, you know, and, and people are, were not so good with the feet, obviously needed to practice a lot to be able to do a little bit uh, in England because of the speed of the game. There would have been uh, quite a few issues with some goalies who could mm. save uh, shots, but not kick balls really. And uh, yeah, that was an adaptation probably at that time to, uh, yeah, to do for everyone. And as soon as this happened, I was still pretty young, so my coaching started after. But I did always um, part from playing feet. So if you have all different components from goalkeeper. You, if you train goalies, you need to improve uh, the feet work. You need to improve technical diving. You need to prove, uh, improve um, taking crosses on the move. Um, playing with the feet, left foot, right foot. So you make different blocks each time to improve each component because you want them to be all around. So that's what you have to uh, keep in your head. And every uh, uh, component needed, you have to improve. And nowadays, there's also a big part uh, from... Uh, Development in the gym, you know, coordination. Um, I, I, I call the goalkeeper nowadays is a jumping athlete. You need speed reactions, you need flexibility, you need strength, you need power. So in the gym, you can do a lot of training without diving 50,000 times up and down to become a goalkeeper is a massive part as well. Mm, of course. I mean, just going back to the passport rule, I remember in England, I don't know what it was like in Holland, mm. but a lot of pundits or people commentating on football at the time, they were very against it. They thought that yeah. the, the famous phrase that just kept coming out over and over again was, we're just going to see the ball being booted into row Z yeah. all the time. And it's it, the game's just going to collapse. And in reality, it hasn't worked like that because goalkeepers have adapted and, and learned yeah, how yeah. to how to use mm -hmm. that sort that you know the ball coming back to them actually use it to actually get their team on the front foot. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I, I mean, of course, as soon as that rule comes, all the people uh, start training more on, on them situations, and you know, I think I was I was probably I don't know I, I guess I was sixteen, so everyone. 
after me probably who are playing now been growing up with it really so some will be better than others with it that that's also a quality no uh, i think ali is really good with it addison is good with it so um one one or two are not so good with it because they have less coordination flexibility yeah. too so um you know and and yeah we looking for the ones who can help us the best in this way of play and that's how we try to create and 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 yeah we cannot complain at the moment but before ali uh, i think reina was pretty good the body was also good with the feet i know they uh, people were a lot negative about simon but he was in the end actually a lot better than and uh than he was uh getting uh, credit for but you know that's how it works in football as well now there's especially if you work for liverpool there is like 400 million uh, supporters so you you know that you get the positive energy and sometimes the negative energy and you have to deal with that as well huh? if you're enjoying this video so far please show your support for the ken 7 channel by subscribing clicking the like button and also clicking the notifications button as well to get future broadcasts. If you could also share the video on your Twitter and Facebook account, that will show YouTube's algorithm that you like our content. Have you heard about Ken7 merchandise? The link is in the description of this video. We have premium fanware for fans covering Liverpool, Celtic and Scotland and it's fanware for young and old so we have t-shirts hoodies sweatshirts caps mugs you name it we've got it just something else to remember every purchase that is made on our website we donate to the marina dalgalish appeal so you're helping a great cause as well you you've actually preempted one of my questions um so simon minule and, and loris obviously had some troubles yeah and at the time i'd I'm assuming you saw it that, that a lot of the attention was kind of focused on on you and people mm. questioning your your coaching. I mean, how did that make you feel? You know what I mean at the time? Uh, yeah, for for me, I'm I'm pretty calm in the, in that because you know you have to respect people's opinion, but you also have to have belief in what you're doing. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I, uh, people don't talk me out of my. Uh, thinking and knowledge you know and I would have the same thinking in my work so that don't change so and and I'm calm with the goalies you know there's no one is perfect um, there's more going on but the only thing I can say you know that the goalies can only improve if they feel that they also have the backing you know if people put them on the pressure with social media and talking bad. No one is ever going to play better by getting negative um, press, if you like. But uh, um, yeah, in, in my situation, I'm, I'm calm with it. I, I, I deal with it and that's how it is. You know, everyone can have his opinion and, and I stay in my own philosophy and way of work. That's part of football, you know, so... Well, that's good. Let's um, let's have a chat about Liverpool. So, yeah. what's the feeling around the club after the the season we've had so far? Yeah, the, the feeling is a little bit. I don't know if it's frustration because of all the issues we had this season, but the feeling is that uh, we we are not uh, finished yet. We want to do more, and and we have the hunger, all the coaching staff and the players to to try to achieve the same things we did. You know when. That drive, I think, is from the boss on uh, with everyone on the coaching side, but from the players also. Uh, you know, obviously, we've not always been helped with situations, how they uh, worked out. But, you know, as a club, you have to deal with it. Um, yeah, if you're missing a lot of players, it's not make it easy if you play every three, three games because it's difficult to fresh uh, players up. Positioning-wise, we had some issues and... Yeah, that, that, that is part of football. We are a bit unfortunate in that. And then some decisions in games were not falling our way as well. So that, that is what we have to deal with. And, and, you know, we have to stay positive and, and, and try to turn it around. And that is 
the boss will always be working with that and the players as well. So we have to make the negative uh, situation uh, to be a, back to a positive one. And, and that is how it is now. I, I mean, <clears throat> our lads have been described as mentality giants by, yeah. by Jürgen. Mm. And I was thinking the other day, when they come through this period... Yeah. Well, you know, fingers crossed that they have now. You know, they've, they've, we've just won the last two games, but they've been in a dark place. Yeah. The mental strength that will give them yeah. moving forward as a collective experience is it, it, that's just going to that's going to benefit them surely in the future. Yeah, of course, um, and I think I think as well. You know, uh, obviously, we from the mentality monsters get a lot of negativity uh, from. Yeah, everywhere, which is, uh, you know, normal if, if you don't win and if you've been winning uh, so many games in the past, you know, but now we have to, as a as a team, you know, and by the team, I mean and the boss and all the coaches and the players uh, go back to what we have been doing and that is by working really hard and keep working really hard for 90 minutes and, you know, the the support is coming back hopefully soon will will make that happen as well that that makes a, a lot uh, a di- difference as well for for the team and and they give them extra fire to to find momentum and and that is what we have to uh, try and and get back and momentum and and fight uh, and giving all you have every game for more than 90 minutes will turn it around. I'm, I'm pretty convinced with that. Let's, um, let's have a little chat about Alisson. Mm. So when it becomes apparent that we are going to sign a goalkeeper, yeah, I'm guessing that you're involved in that process, yeah? Um, yeah, f- you that's what what your job is so i try to follow all the goalies around and and write reports on that and give my opinion on it but uh you know we have a video analyst who make videos of things as well and obviously the coaches and the, the boss and the scouting department so it's 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 a big uh project if you like and and in the end obviously the owners have to uh justify um the the transfer and and make that decision so that that's probably how it works a little bit uh, i make always every season a list with number one two three or talented goalkeepers yeah and, and then you try uh to work ahead but sometimes uh, it can only happen in the last moment so um and then your list is in the bin, most of them because they already sign with other clubs. So it all depends how it runs and possibilities and and situations really. So, what was it you saw in Allison's game at Roma that you thought he's? I mean, he's he's definitely the one we need. Um, you know, he had a good uh, speed reactions. That's and and he plays on the front foot. You know, and when the ball was in the right area, he was always there and he, and he looked really calm in what he did. Of course, uh, I, I was looking from uh, him from 2013. It went like I always looking for goalie. So I, uh, Donny was our goalie uh, for a while in, uh, in uh, I don't know how, what year it was, but uh, I, I spoke. To, I still speak to Doni now, and I asked him at that time, and it was in 2013. Like, is there anyone in Brazil at the moment? What do you think could be a look at? So yeah, and he said, uh, you know, have a look at Allison, and so he was a uh, international, and then I keep following him, and uh, I, I stay with it. But I do that with a lot of goalies. Uh, I try if I think yeah they can be okay. I keep following them, and you know that can be from 17 up till we always look between. Well, the club has the policy really that we looking like till 26, seven or below. So to to try and find them, so you keep following them over them periods. We play them in in, and then I said to the boss, "Yeah, I told you about this goalie. 
and he played against us in uh, in uh, in the USA and he did well then but was not in the team at Rome but then when he was playing in the team I keep watching it and that's what I did with other goalies too and you know in the end there was a decision made that we wanted to sign and then I say uh, this is my opinion and then the club of course need to decide as well with um, Michael and the scouts and obviously the bosses the the main one to decide and uh, and and the owners then in the end um, pay the money for it and then you hope that it also works no that is always the case no because uh, uh, when Doni came from Italy um he had a few he needed a few months to get used to the speed and 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 different uh things to change but when ali came through the door it was like oof he was straight there so uh, and and that was uh great for us you know to see that uh, he came through the door and here he was uh, showing us straight away the speed reactions he had in the first training sessions so we were looking at each other and we were smiling and and uh, yeah and the rest you have seen up to now and and yeah. you know and now hopefully he can keep producing uh, this and and you know I always talk to him about yeah you always have to create your own hunger by finding ways you know I want to make team 10 clean sheets I want to make 20 clean clean sheets I want to be better than the opponent goalie uh, you know, you set yourself always targets. And I think as a goalie uh, and probably as a player, you have to do that to keep yourself motivated and sharp in your mind. And this kind of things you talk about, but also to young goalies. So um, we give everyone the same attention and we want everyone to do well. So just, I mean, that sounds like it's probably not, but it sounded to me like. You have to keep them on the, on the toes. I mean, Alisson obviously has won. He's won everything with us in the last few years. Yeah. He's widely recognised as the best goalkeeper in the world, or one of the best goalkeeper in the world. Is that a difficult job to try and keep him motivated? Um, no, if you if you are a good goalie and you want to be a good goalie, you are motivated from yourself. But I only give them from my thinking the things how to uh, create your motivation as well no because yeah the boys they they um, they get asked a lot from and you need to try and keep them as long as possible at the high level and the high level also dictate by the team if the team plays really well in front then it makes the job on the goalkeeper a lot easier. If the team doesn't play as well in front, then there is a lot more ass from the goalkeeper. Um, pretty much an easy is if you defend from the front with 11, uh, then then you don't have to make too many saves. And if the, the distances between the, the players and the goalie is smaller, then there is uh, easier um, to play in goal to make saves. So... It's a combination from everything and and he fits perfect in the way we play. That's how it is. That mental strength of, of being able to be out the game for large periods of it and then have to switch on. I mean, that, that I'm guessing that's not something you can even teach. That's just something that they've got or not. Yeah, that's true. You, you need to find a focus. And um, I always try to say you know okay if you're not too busy try to keep talking keep running so you stay warm and and then you keep yourself ready for the one moment you ask for because that is the way we play that's that is how it works and his uh, focus and concentration is always good and that will make you then that one match winning save he is expect to save and uh, he expects us then to hopefully keep us in the game with that. So that, that is uh, what we always try to talk about and, and help. I'm going to put you on the spot here. Is, is he the best goalkeeper you've ever worked with? Yeah, I, I can say that. That's, yeah. That I can say yes. But we had a lot of good goalies, to be honest. Mm. All had different good attributes, I think. 
Ali is the most complete. I, I didn't see anyone with the speed, power and reactions mm. right, like he has uh, in the time I've been here. Uh, Reina was really good with the feet. Mm. Ali is, is pretty good and calm with the feet too. So, um, so everyone had good components, but Ali is probably the most uh, natural and, and in everything really. And, you know, there's a lot of good goalies around the world. You know, Noy is good, the Steg is good. And, and we are uh, obviously having one of the best in the world at the moment. And we want to keep it like that. Of course. Um, talk to me about Kravine Kelleher. Because mm. me and you, I don't know whether you remember, we had a bit of backwards and forwards on Instagram yeah. the, the day that he played. I think he played his full debut and he was brilliant. Mm. And I, I think I just met messages to say, you must be very proud. Yeah. You know what's his potential? Yeah, his potential is is in his own hands, really. Um, I said it actually before um, he started playing. You know, um, I, I think he uh, he has everything what you want in a top goalkeeper. He has speed, reactions. He's calm, so um, he shows that every day in training. Um, he had the chance uh, this year to show that in the games, and he has showed that. And um, and I I think uh, yeah, for a young goalkeeper that needs to happen continuously. You know, uh, every time you get a chance, you have to produce. And he made a great step uh, this year, and it was coming because we could see that in training every day. But then also when it comes out in the games that that you always have to wait and see and you know he's unfortunate he had a small injury with the stomach and and been out so hopefully he's uh, this week back um, but um, yeah he, he was close to being uh, obviously uh, making a start for Ireland so uh, he's on a good way. And we uh, have to keep uh, working with him the same as we try to do with all the other goalkeepers because we want them all to do well and try to help them all as good as we can. Um, it must be difficult when you've got a talent like Kavine. Mm. And obviously you've got the best goalkeeper in the world blocking his, mm. his, his progression. I mean, how, how do you manage that? Um, yeah, that's just uh, we, we, uh, you manage it just by treating everyone the same, you know. Uh, in the end, uh, one can play, and we need to help him the best we can. But we need to have number two, number three, yeah. and all the own boys uh, also improving. And I think we need to give him the same attention, the same way of feel, and in the end. Uh, the manager decides who is starting and that's how it is and yeah that's part of the job and uh, I think you know I'm pretty happy with the, the squad we have Does it get to a point though where you think he's he's going to have to go for his own development? Um, it, it's difficult to say you know uh, because we want we need we need uh, we need all the goalkeepers yeah to, you know, if you're in the top, you need good goalies, no? Um, look at all the other big clubs. They all have two, three goalies who can play. That's what we need to. And, and uh, you know, you always have to prepare for the worst scenarios as well. And, and we've been in them situations sometimes when Ali was injured. Mm -hmm. and, and then you need uh, the number two to step up. And that, that's how it is. So you need the uh, number two and number three also from a high level. And and that's how it is. Yeah. So listen, thanks very much, John. I really appreciate you chatting to me. I really, really appreciate your time. Obviously, you're a busy man. And, um, you know, hopefully the Reds can get a win at the weekend, Arsenal, and then move on to Real Madrid, the big one. You, you fancy the Real Madrid game? We uh, we always uh, want to win every game. So uh, and first we focus on a Saturday, and then we focus on a Tuesday. Mm. And we work always from game to game, and we want to get back to winning ways consistently. So yep. let's see. Yeah. Brilliant. Well, thanks very much.